Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hi, sweet friends. Hi, Virginia. Well, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. It's, oh my gosh, next week, school kiddos go back oh, to yes. school, Monday. right? Monday. Monday is yeah. the big day. So fun. I can't believe it. Um, we're so glad you're watching today. Our topic is We want to know what you do when you're frustrated because you really want something and it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. And I also think it, um, that also another question would be Do you, when you're waiting for something, have you learned to wait in peace, mm -hmm. or do you get frustrated right. or ang anxious or whatever? So we'll, we'll discuss that and be honest, be honest. Do you want to share a story or do you want to kind sure. of... Sure. Yeah? I don't know. Did you or anyone out there see that video by Steve Harvey? Um, he talks about how a long time ago when he was living with his mom, his car broke down and he had his like old car sitting by the curb. and. It was just dead. It didn't work at all. And um, he said that he kept saying to his mom, like, I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to get a new car. And every time she would say, yeah, but your old car is still sitting up on blocks on the curb. And finally, he realized that he had to make room for the new car before he could. He had to get rid of the old car to make room for the new car. And when he finally got rid of the old car and he didn't have a new car yet, like three days later, he got a new car. It finally happened. So Bam. it's kind of like you got to make room <laughs> for what you want. Are you holding on to something old and broken, or are you making room for that new thing that you're ready for in your life? Yeah. Um, John's in. Hey, John. How are you, Catherine? Hey, Catherine. Tammy's in. Hi, hi, you guys. And hey, EJ. Hi. We're so glad you're watching, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, so I have to say that I would get very frustrated. Like, totally impatient. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm I impatient expected too. I should have it just kids and really you I actually you know what that's probably why I have yeah. it because you always have to kind of make sure you get in there and get what you need and um and trying to, you know, hang out for you, you hang on for dear life to try to get word in edgewise exactly. and that kind of stuff. But um and I, I, this actually, this whole topic came up because I think it was, um, oh, gall, what's it, what was his name? Oh, yeah, I can't remember. All of a sudden, I can't, Michael. I think Michael, it was Michael yeah. who said, Michael Ford, who said he's, he's um, frustrated because he's been waiting on a, on a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's not been able to have it. So it really started this whole thing. And so, and really, this can be about anything, but I will start off by saying there is a great book for anybody who is looking for love, especially women. Sorry guys, I don't know if this will apply to you or not, but um, but there's a really, really great book. It's called um, uh, The Surrendered Single, How to Find the Man You Want to Marry, and it's such a great book. It's so good, and my mom sent it to me. I was 35. Oh, shoot. I was so mad she sent it to me. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm going to find my husband at some point at some time. She was just concerned. Like, oh, God, she's not going to find anybody. And, um, and so anyway, I read this book and it was, it was life changing for me and it really helped to, to start a process of being open to find the right person. But I have, but there's a different perspective that I have now, but John comes in and says, Michael, we just talked about you. I'm glad to be here with you ladies. Always. Oh, I always watch Steve Harvey. Yeah, good stuff. He's, it's a, a great he's come a long way. Yeah, he absolutely has. And yes. there's another really great story about, um, Steve Harvey where he would, when he was really young. Um, I think he was in elementary school. His teacher had asked to write in a piece of paper what it was that you wanted to do in life. Like, what did you want to become? And so he wrote on his, he wrote that he wanted to be a comedian. But he stuttered so badly and he gave it to his teacher and she and gave it to his teacher and the teacher said, Steve, Stevie, do you, 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 are you funny? No. Have you ever been in front of people? No. Are you, um, you stutter, you can't really speak well mm -hmm. right yeah well you're not gonna be a comedian so pick out something else and so he went home to his dad and he, he said you know show this piece of paper to his dad and he said my teacher said I can't become a comedian and he said Stevie I want you to every single day I want you to open up that piece of paper and I want you to agree that you're gonna be a comedian and you can do anything in this life that you want to oh, so I now I understand I love that. like what yeah. that the car thing was so important so um, Carol says she deals with her waiting with faith 
And um, that's very true. Have you come, like, have you seen how you deal with waiting on a hope or a dream or healing or anything like that um, differently now than you did, let's say, five years ago or 10 years ago? Yeah, the main difference I would say is that I've kind of like looking into my past and when I was frustrated with something, now I can see that there was always a purpose to either waiting or being redirected. So I've kind of learned to trust a little more that I'm patient though, I'm yeah. not the best at it, yeah. but I try to remind myself of that. Like my favorite saying is, whenever I thought I was being rejected, I was actually being redirected to something oh, better. That's a good saying, yeah. I like that one, so, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's so true when I look back in my life. Yeah. yeah. Swish, you best answer this. Are you, do you get frustrated? Hey girl. I actually just watched a video with you doing your ALS challenge from 2014. I think it's on your Facebook page. Girl, you crazy. <laughs> um, anyway, so I think now the life coach that I'm working with, she's awesome because she talks about how that what we see showing up in our lives is actually what we're creating and really what we want. Mm -hmm. And so what, I'm, what I've been trying to do so waiting on uh, whatever it is, a job, a new car, um, uh, you know, a, a promotion, whatever that is, to see that and to visualize in your mind what that looks like. And I, when I, um, when you really want something, because in the Bible it talks about how Abraham had to see the, uh, all the, because God said, you're going to be the father of many nations. He's like, you're crazy. I'm not, I don't have any kids and I can't see it and then so God had to take him down to the beach and showed him the sand and said you have to see this this is these are all these grains of sand are, are going to be um, who you're going to be the father to many nations and so and then obviously it came to pass because once he saw it and he got it he's like okay no matter what gets in my way it doesn't matter this is going to come to pass mm -hmm. and so then there was a peace about it and so it makes a lot of sense if you think about what's happening right now in your life that you don't have that you really want right yeah. whether it's money whether it's uh, you know it doesn't really matter what it is or something specific that you want and it's really for a, a higher power a good thing like good for the world good for mm -hmm. you good for your family because I'm not talking about you know junky stuff I'm really talking about things that because making more money is good for all of us good for you good for your family right yeah. getting a promotion is um, all of that so when you see what it is that you want see it yeah see yourself if you're gonna you want to lose weight see yourself thinner if you want that new job, see yourself in that job every day, and anything that comes against that, just just count it as that's not it. That's not it. I'm seeing what I see, and you hold on to what's called your vision. Yes. And so I would encourage you to to do the vision of what it is that you want. And every time you see something that comes up into you that is very frustrating or that waiting, say, I somehow I'm creating this. Why did? Why is this showing up? Do I, I love really the way want you that? explain that because. Um, I was going to mention the book, The Secret, and it's the same thing. I know mm -hmm. it's a controversial book, but I believe that it is totally in line with the Bible. I mean, there's so many examples in there where you believe and you receive and things like that. And the same with the money. Like, some people feel that it's being greedy to want more money. But when you're asking for more, you're believing that there is abundance in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing is to believe that you can, can have it all. Like, and that's not being greedy because no. if you're being generous and if you're giving away as much as you're getting, I mean, that does benefit everybody. It absolutely yeah. does. So, um, hey, Carm, so glad you, oh my gosh, I miss you, friend. Oh, mine. Um, John says, in case, uh, in my case, when I finally stopped looking, he brought me my wife and he's meaning God. It can absolutely be frustrating, but God never meant it to be that way in anything we are waiting for. Seek him and he will add it unto you in his timing and it's so very very true and so because you you know speaking on that topic and i know some of you may not be christians and that's totally okay that's you know we're not here to preach to you but um i we also look at it as when, when you're looking for a loving father or whatever think about if you though for those of us who have children or even if you don't have kids and you have a best friend or something don't you want the best for them think about right. that like i think about isabella and i think do I want her to, to be successful? Yeah. Do I want to make sure that she's safe? Yes, I do. Do I want to make sure she is just thriving? And yeah, I do. And so would I give her the world if I could do it? Absolutely. And so even so much more, 
our Father in Heaven, right? right. And so um, I think that's a really great point. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate that. One of the <laughs> things from The Secret was that if you're looking for a spouse, then you should really like make room for that spouse in your life. Like leave oh, yeah, half of your closet empty and sleep on one side of your bed, not in the middle of your bed. That's oh, like that's believing that you're I going. I did that. Do you know, I did actually, you? I did that. And it worked? I absolutely did that. And that was, I, I don't know if that's it was, so cool. I think at one point, because I went, you know what, I'm all over this mm -hmm. queen, this, uh, queen size bed. I'm all over this queen size yeah. bed. And I did, I started, I just thought that I just remember that. That's I moved over to the one side that. of the bed. It took about five or six years for Jim to come in, but he finally did. Actually, I don't think it was Mike, Michael Cord, it wasn't you that was looking for the wife. I think it was Michael Cipriano that was, now that I think about it. I can't remember. Anyway, um, we are kind of at the end of our time together today, but I'm so glad you all were watching and thank you so much and, sh and continue to comment because we love to, we love to hear how you are, like how you deal with things because it really helps everybody in the, in the process yeah. and it just makes us think about good things rather than, um, you know, and so as, bad. as much as we don't talk about these things, so many people are going through them. So if yep. you just comment and then you all of a sudden you see it and you're like, oh wow, he like this, um, someone, Joanne? John just said that he oh. did that too with his bed. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, you just never know. So move over. I think it was either Michael or Mike, uh, Michael or Mike, right? Did Somebody I say that right? did. One of the Michaels. The, move over in your bed, make room for your wife. Clean out your there closet. You <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clean it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thanks you guys for joining yeah. us. Appreciate it. I hope you, oh, Joanne, aw. Oh, um, I hope you'll share this video out and, oh, it's Michael Cipriano. Oh, yeah. good um, So, I, um, we'll figure out when we're gonna be together again next. I know all the kiddos are going back to school, at least in our world they are. So, have, have an awesome week, you guys. Bye. Bye.